Artificial intelligence, or AI, is everywhere right now. It writes essays, creates art, and can even talk to you like a human. But what about using AI for stroke recovery? By the end of this video, you'll understand what AI actually is and whether it's helpful or just hype for stroke recovery. So in order to have this conversation, we need to understand what AI actually is. When most people hear the term artificial intelligence, they think of something sentient, understanding, and intelligent. But that is not what's happening here. Most of the AI that you've heard about, models like ChatGPT, Gemini, and Claude, are what's called large language models. This means that they've been trained on billions of examples of text. So their main job is actually to predict the next word in a sentence. When you train on that huge amount of data, those predictions that they come up with can be incredibly convincing. It can look like the AI is thinking or understanding, but really it's just finding common patterns and then spitting out the most likely answer. And it's really good at that. And there's definitely the possibility for future innovations in healthcare as a result of this. However, that means that at least right now, AI is not intelligent. It's predictive, statistical. It's not reasoning about your unique, specific situation. It's just giving you the most common pattern that it's seen. So now that we know what AI actually is, why might stroke survivors want to use it? Well, there are actually several different reasons. And the first is, it's available 24 seven. Let's say that you wake up in the middle of the night, it's 2 a.m. and you have this burning question that you just can't get out of your brain. Well, you can search for it using AI and get an answer immediately. It's easy, you don't have to make an appointment, there's not a wait list, and you don't have to battle insurance to use it. And it can feel empowering. After any health scare, you want answers immediately. And AI can give answers quickly, even though they might be wrong. And to be honest, I get it. Stroke recovery can be confusing, overwhelming, and expensive. And AI can feel like it provides a lifeline. But here's where I need to be really clear. AI is not a therapist. And there are real risks of letting it be one for you. And the first and most dangerous risk is that it can cause harm. Unfortunately, there are real documented cases where AI has perpetuated harm and or death in some individuals. There's even a new term called AI psychosis, which is being used to describe this disconnect with reality as a result of using AI. From a story published by PBS, Dr. Joseph Pierre, clinical professor of psychiatry said, well, psychosis is a term that roughly means that someone has lost touch with reality. And the usual examples that we encounter in psychiatric disorders are either hallucinations where we're seeing or hearing things that aren't really there, or delusions, which are fixed false beliefs. Like for example, thinking the CIA is after me. And mostly what we've seen in the context of AI interactions is really delusional thinking. So these are delusions that are occurring in the setting of interacting with AI chatbots. But harm isn't possible just in this way. Simply if AI suggests an exercise that might be too advanced or not right for your situation, you can risk injury, fatigue, or even setbacks. Another risk is that it can be wrong. AI doesn't fact check. And this means that it can give you exercises or information that is unsafe, outdated, or just flat out incorrect. And unless you're a doctor or a therapist with years of training, you can't tease out what is right or wrong because that AI might sound really confident. Another risk is that it can't see you. AI doesn't understand the level of muscle weakness you experience or if you have spasticity, if your balance is unsteady, or for example, if you have shoulder pain or why you have shoulder pain. So it may suggest exercises or other strategies that are inappropriate for you or even have the potential to hurt you. And lastly, it can't individualize. Stroke recovery is deeply personal and it depends on so many different factors that AI does not have access to. Where in the brain your stroke happened, how severe it was, what medications you take, what other medical conditions you have. And even if you give all of that information to the AI, it cannot logically or accurately reason through that information and create an individualized plan for you. Because again, it's just predicting words. It's not a physician or a therapist with the ability to logically reason. So 
Understanding all of this, it's not to say that there aren't ways that AI can be helpful for stroke survivors. So let's talk about that. Where AI can actually be helpful for stroke survivors is as a starting point. So one thing you can use it for is brainstorming. AI can give you a list of general exercises, ideas, resources, or strategies that may be helpful for what you're going through. And brainstorming is great. It can give you some ideas, but before acting on any of those suggestions, it's important that you talk to your doctor or therapist first. The second thing that it can be helpful for is learning and education. It can explain medical terminology in simpler language. It can also explain what certain medications are for, and it can answer general health questions like what is a healthy range for blood pressure. It can help you plan your day, create a helpful routine, or learn how to optimize your schedule. It can also give you ideas for healthy meals and then help you plan your grocery list accordingly so you don't have to think about it. And this allows you to save your mental energy for other tasks. So it's not that you can't use AI to help with your recovery. You just need to be cautious about how you use it. Here are four things that might be helpful in helping you wisely use AI. And the first is use it for learning the basics. You can ask it to explain what certain stroke recovery terms mean, what CVA is, what neuroplasticity means, what is spasticity. You could have it summarize a research article for you or help you look up resources and organizations that might be able to support you in your journey. Like I mentioned, you can use it to help you get started. You can ask AI to generate a general home exercise program for stroke recovery, but the thing is you cannot take it at face value. It does not logically reason and it cannot create an individualized tailored plan for your specific situation and medical needs. So having a general outline of exercises that could be helpful is great, but talk to your doctor or your therapist first before implementing any of those to make sure that it's right and safe for your situation. Don't assume the AI is correct. Like I've mentioned, it can sound very convincing and confident, even while it's spouting incredibly incorrect information. So you can ask your questions, but I highly recommend seeking out resources that are factually based like physiopedia, ebrsr.com, and strokeengine.ca, all of which provide evidence to back up what they're recommending. Don't get emotionally wrapped up when you're talking to the AI. When you talk with an AI chatbot, it can almost feel like you're talking to another person. It's meant to sound very conversational and casual. AI can make you feel like it hears you, that it is sentient, but it does not and it is not. So, is AI hype or helpful? Well, it's a little bit of both. AI can't be your therapist, but there are still ways that you can use it to help you in your stroke recovery journey as long as you take precautions. Just remember, AI is a tool, not a medical provider. It cannot design a personalized rehab program for you that's guaranteed to be safe for your body and your medical conditions. It can give you a starting point, but that's where your doctor or therapist need to come in. Leave me a comment and let me know if you have used AI in your recovery and how. And as always, please support the channel however you can. Like this video, subscribe, become a channel member by clicking the join button, or leave us a super thanks by clicking in the YouTube bar below. A huge thank you to all of the donors who make this nonprofit possible, with a special thanks to Ryan D, Modus Nova, and Joseph M, and our Empowered tier on Patreon. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.